So in this video, we're going to talk about word problems with percentages. This is part one. This is a collaboration with Mad Skills. Um, this is preparation for the Certified Welding Inspector exam. Mad Skills offers training for that. And uh, so this is in collaboration. There's also free practice problems that go along with this um, in collaboration with Mad Skills. So you can find all that information in the description of this video. So where I want to start is I want to tell you about like a trick or a hack, um, something that is very helpful to know when you have word problems. Very often the word of means multiply. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's start with this first example, half of 24. So this actually has a direct translation to how we want to solve this. Half means one half. And then of, like I just told you, that means multiply. So half times and then 24, of course, just means 24. So what is half of 24? That is 12. Okay, so before I go any farther, I actually want to talk a little bit about like how do you enter a calculation like this on your on your calculator because maybe you're not familiar with how to enter in like one half. And for this exam, I'm assuming that you're using like a, a contractor's calculator. Okay, so let's just talk about this a little bit. How do you do this half times 24 calculation? You have a few options. So there is a fraction button on those calculators. It looks like this. Um, so take a second to look at your calculator. There can be different brands, so you might have to take a moment just to familiarize yourself with it. So the way that this would look then, so to enter in one half, I'd have one, this slash button, two. This will give me one half and then the times 24. So pause the video and make sure you feel comfortable doing that and then you get 12. So that's one way you can do it. The other option you have is you can always convert the fractions to a decimal. I have a whole video where I talked about kind of how to do that. So to convert the fraction to a decimal, now I know in this case probably you, you might know what the fraction is. One divided by two is equal to, to 0.5. Um, but just in general, that's the, the approach that you'd want to take. And then I would just take 0.5 times 24, which would also give me 12. So you have some options in how to do this. And so you want to play around with this a little bit just to figure out like, which method you prefer for working with this. So let's finish this out now. So I've got two thirds of 12. So once again, let's just appreciate this direct translation. So first two thirds, so that means the fraction two thirds, and then of means multiply, and then you've got the 12. So pause the video here, try, you know, actually calculating this out. And what you should get is eight. So you have two different ways that you could try calculating with this. So take your time and actually do that. You definitely need to be good friends with your calculator. And so when you are working through videos like this, like force yourself to take the time to, to get that familiar with it so that you feel very confident in working with that tool. So let's go back to this, this of idea. So now I've got 24% of 72. So starting with this one. So 24%, I have to write that as a decimal and so that's going to be 0.24. And just by the way, I have a video on how to convert from percents to decimals if you're not familiar with that. So I'll, I'll drop a link to that below. Okay. So anyways, so 0.24 and then of means multiply. So it's going to be times and then this, the 72. So if I multiply those things together, I get 17.28. So then what's it going to be for D? How would I write out that expression? 35% of 99. Okay. 35% 0.35. The of will be the times and then the 99 is just the 99. So I multiply those things together. I get 34.65. All right. So now that we've, we've got kind of the, the idea behind this, why don't we take a second just to let you try this to make sure you feel comfortable. I want you to pause the video here, do these three examples and then hit play when you're ready to see the solutions. So starting with a, so two fifths times 70. That's the expression we want to write. So that's going to give me 28. Okay. What about 20% of 82? So it's going to be 0.2 times 82. Multiply those things together. You get 16.4. All right. 6%. Now be careful with converting this decimal. Remember you always move that decimal point two spots over. So 6% is 0.06 and then times the 0.321. So multiply those three things together. I get 0.01926. All right. So this, I think like once you kind of know the language of this is pretty straightforward. And in many situations, the problem can be summarized, like the problems we were just doing, but you just have to know how to kind of describe situations like that. So let me show you a situation. 
Undercut shall not exceed 12% of the base metal thickness. The base metal is three fourths of an inch thick. What is the maximum allowable depth of undercut? Okay, so let's analyze this problem. I want you to notice there's our percentage, 12%, and then also notice there's that word of again. Okay, so this actually is starting to feel like what we were just working on. But maybe the, the, the thing that throws everything off is it's not a number now, right? It says the base metal thickness. Okay, well, um, notice it talks about in the next sentence what that thickness is. The base metal is three fourths of an inch thick. Okay, so I, I wanna just go back and, and like describe this information. We were talking about 12% of the base metal thickness. And then we also said the base metal is three fourths of an inch. So the, the thing is that the, the, the English language can be kind of wordy, okay? So you will see situations described like this, but you can ultimately compress these types of situations into those problems we were just doing. So I can actually take both of these and just say, okay, so this is really asking for what is 12% of three fourths? right? Because it says of whatever the base metal thickness is, and then it tells you what that is. So I can compress this whole situation into this, and then I know how to calculate this, right? So this is like the skill that you need to develop. And so if I were to finish this, so 12% is 0.12, the of is times, and then the three fourths of an inch, I can just plug in that, that fraction, multiply those things together, and I get 0.09. Um, just, just another route if you wanted to go a different route with this. Um, if you wanted to just go ahead and convert this to a decimal, so what I could do is I could just take three divided by four, I would get that that's 0.75. And then I could just redo this calculation as 12% of 0.75 instead of three fourths. Um, doesn't really matter, it, it would give you the same thing. So 0.12 times 0.75 and I still get the same answer. So if you're watching this and you're now asking, well, which result is better? Um, it's, it's whatever you prefer, tomato, tomato, it's gonna be the same number. It's, it's, they're literally the exact same thing. So just if you have a certain route that you wanna go with that, that's, that's totally fine. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to pause here and I want you to try this problem. So cracks shall not exceed 8% of the weld length. The weld is 14 inches long. What is the longest allowable crack? So I want you to pause this video and set up that calculation and then tell me what is the longest allowable crack. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so once again, so notice we've got that percentage. We're using the word of, and then we have this the weld length. And I'm told in the next sentence that the weld length is 14 inches. So this whole situation, I can really compress into what is 8% of 14, okay? And then I feel comfortable with this calculation at this point, that comes out to 0 0.08, remember you have to move the decimal two spots, 0 0.08 times 14, multiply those together, I get 1.12 inches. And the interpretation of that then is that any crack over 1.12 inches is going to be not acceptable in this situation. Okay, so that's kind of like one level that comes with this. But sometimes you have to compare quantities, and when this happens, this is gonna require more organization. So let me show you the situation. Undercut shall not exceed half the base metal thickness or one eighth of an inch, which, whichever is less. The base metal thickness is 0.375 inches. Undercut shall not exceed at what depth? Okay, so with problems like this, this is a lot of information. So the first question I have is, how do you know that this is a problem asking you to compare? You can read this over again and you should really prove this to yourself. How do you know? Pause and hit play when you're ready. So the, the, the thing is, right, it says whichever, whichever is less, that whichever is less, that is telling you right there, you have something to compare. You wouldn't say whichever if you just had one thing. Okay, so the next question is then, what situations do we need to compare? And so as I read this, th this problem is actually set up in a nice way because it's got this or here. So the or is dividing up those two situations. And so the first one is this half the base metal thickness. That's the first one. And the second one is this one eighth. Okay, so this is a lot of information and something that I think is very underrated when people are working on problems like this is, like they, they don't take the time with these problems because it looks short 
it looks like it should be very easy like you know and people just want to go very very fast with it so I'm gonna tell you some math hacks here if you are rusty you need to keep yourself organized in these ty types of situations. Um, maybe eventually you won't need to stay so organized because you'll kind of get the process, but this is very important. So I'm going to take a lot of time working through this. And that's because you like you should also be doing that. And second, like you should not be shy with writing out a plan of how to approach these problems as you're getting used to them. Eventually you get used to these situations and then you don't have to do so much work. But like if this is just overwhelming to you, this is kind of how you hack these types of problems. Don't be shy about writing out the information. So I'm looking at all of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write out a plan for myself of this versus this. So here is how I am rewriting this problem for myself. Half the base metal thickness or one eighth. These are the two situations. And now that I've written this out, I can actually see like half, half of what? <laughs> like I have nothing to compare here, right? So I need to go back to the problem and read it again. So we need to just figure out what situation are we applying this to now that we have a plan. So as I read through this, so now I say, okay, I, I need to know what is that metal thickness. And that is the next part of this, right? The base metal thickness is 0.375 of an, uh, 0.73, blah, 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 0.375 inches. Okay. So I add that to my plan. And so now we're kind of back to this, this thing right here where, you know, I think about how do I write this more efficiently? Again, the English language can be very wordy. So we just want to compress this. I would think of this as half of 0.375. That is how I can compress this entire statement. So now I want to actually replace this with a new revised plan. That's not quite so wordy so that I can just visualize what math do I actually need to do? So I'm going to take, half of 0.375 and then compare that to one eighth of an inch. Okay. So this calculation comes out to half times 0.375 and that comes out to 0.1875. And then for the one eighth, one divided by eight, that comes out to 0.125. Okay, great. Are we done? Mm, no. <laughs> remember, we were trying to compare. So you, you might have to remember the problem here. And I think another thing that's very underrated when you're working through problems like this, you very often have to read it again because I feel like I would have gotten to this point and then I would have totally forgotten what I was even trying to do. So let's go back and read the problem again. You can pause the video here if you'd like to read it again. Undercut shall not exceed half the base metal thickness or one eighth of, one eighth of an inch, whichever is less. The base metal thickness is 0.375 inches. Undercut shall not exceed at what depth? So this is the key here, right? Whatever or whichever is less. So between these, I want to know which one is less. So I can draw a little comparison here. Which one of these is the lesser one? This one here is the lesser one. So this quantity is greater than the other one. Um, it's just good to like, do, do you have to use this? I think this is just good for organization and just to have these comparisons here. Don't let the fact that I used an inequality like the, this, is not really making or breaking the problem. The, the bigger thing is that I need to know which of these quantities is lesser. And so then my answer is undercut shall not exceed 0.125 inches. Okay. So these problems look short, but they actually require quite a bit of work. And if you haven't done math or problems like this in a while, you've really got to take your time. You cannot rush through this and you're going to have to practice this many times until the process clicks. Um, if you're rusty, it's just going to feel very overwhelming and with enough practice, then you'll kind of get used to the language again. And then, you know, you'll, you'll get through it a lot faster, but don't be afraid to write out kind of all the, the, the plans. Okay. So let's start with a, a shorter one, but it's another comparison one. So which is greater? one thirty seconds of an inch or 10% of four inches. So I want you to make a plan and organize with this. Okay. So the first question I have for you is what are you trying to compare? You can take a second to pause the video just to figure that out and create your plan if you want to. So when I look at this problem, once again, I like, I see that keyword or this or here is dividing up the situations. And so the first situation is one thirty seconds of an inch. And then the second situation is this 10% of four inches. So those are the situations that I need to compare. So I'm going to make that plan for myself again. And okay. So here's the nice thing in this problem. This, this particular statement is already kind of in that math language that we like. 
so I don't have to do as much work as I did in the last problem. So I can kind of just go through and calculate. So I can start by taking 1 seconds of an inch, 1 divided by 32. What does that come out to? 0 .3, 0 0.03125. And then I can go to the second situation. So this becomes 0.10 times 4 or 0.1 times 4. Doesn't, doesn't matter how you want to write that. And this comes out to 0.4. Okay. Am I done? No. <laughs> Remember, once again, I have to compare. And the problem was asking which is greater. So now I want to just write this out for myself, comparing the two. And now I can see which is greater, right? The greater one is the bigger number, the 0.4. And if I wanted to bring an inequality into this, just to kind of round this out, so this would be my inequality sign. You always have that that mouth, right, even in the larger quantity. That's always the way I think about it. Um, so anyways, so I've, I've got all this. This is all, you know, my, my facts. But the, the answer is going to be 0.4 inches is greater. Okay. All right, so let's do one more. You're going to try this one. Undercut shall not exceed 12.5% of the base metal thickness or 1 seconds of an inch, whichever is less. The base metal is half an inch thick. What is the maximum allowable undercut? So once again, I want you to organize and make a plan and then read the problem again before answering. So the one hint I'm going to give you here is we're talking about whichever is less. So that's, this is going to drive a lot of your plan. So pause the video here, set up your plan and figure that out and then hit play when you're ready. Okay. So when I look at this, once again, I find this word or that kind of divides up my situations. So my first situation is this 12.5% of the base metal thickness. And the second situation is this one right here. So those are my two situations. So I'm going to go ahead and write those out as my plan. And now that I see this, I've got of the base metal thickness. I don't, I don't know what that thickness needs to be. So I need to refer back to the problem. So if I go back to the problem and I read it again, I find base metal is half an inch. So now I can include that in my plan. So this is now I, I've included this into the plan and I can compress all this information into just the statement 12.5% of one half. And this is the calculation that we like to work with, right? Okay, so now we can do the calculation. So this comes out to 0.125 times um, one half. So that's going to come out to 0 0.0625. And then for the, the second one, so I've just got 1 divided by 32. And if I do that calculation, I'm going to get 0 0.03125. And so once again, now what we want to do is we have to read the problem again. What was it that we were trying to do with these two quantities? Because I, I have the memory of a hamster, so I've always got to go back and reread. Okay, so what was I trying to do with this? So here was the problem. And then it was, oh yeah, whichever is less. Okay, so whichever is less, that's what I need to do. So now I take these two quantities and I'm just interested in which is the lesser one. This quantity here is the lesser one. So if I wanted to use an inequality with this, this quantity is greater than the other one. It's always the, the mouth is always opening in the direction of the um, larger number. Okay, so, so anyways, anyways, <laughs> the answer. Undercut then cannot exceed 0 0.03125 inches or 1 32nd of an inch. So this is something that you're going to have to practice multiple times, more than one sitting to fully grasp all of this. That is totally normal, especially if you've been away from math. If you just, you know, don't try to come up with a plan and don't try to understand the full process, you're gonna make it a lot harder on yourself. So take your time, but practice the same problems over and over. And then eventually, you know, after a few days, you're going to find that your, your brain is kind of like in the groove of how to approach these types of problems. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video.